Hello, my name is Robert Blake, and I'm very pleased on behalf of the Language Flagship Technology Innovation Center to talk to you today about language learning online, in particular, the hybrid format. Um, I have a lot of these ideas uh, very fresh in the mind because, as you can see from the screen, I've just uh, published a book uh, in, in the third edition, Brave New Digital Classroom, with my co-author, Gabriel Guillen. And so a lot of these ideas I have just right on the tip of my fingers. So um, when people think about online, blended learning, hybrid learning, these are all uh, terms that uh, do have a relationship with each other. Uh, often they think exclusively in terms of tutorial call. Uh, that is to say, exercises that are online, almost like an electronic workbook that students uh, accomplish in an asynchronous way in deferred time. And then uh, later they uh, send the, the results to the teacher. Uh, other people think about online and hybrid learning as actual social call in synchronous time, in real time, where you use the computer to connect people to other people or groups to other groups or classes to other classes. Actually, I, what I'd like you to uh, keep in mind during the entire presentation is that um, an ideal uh, online or hybrid format course for language learning should include both tutorial call and social call. So let's keep that present as I start to uh, give you uh, the other comments in the presentation. So uh, let's go now to the next slide. And I'll give you a quick overview of what I hope to accomplish here. Um, I'm going to try and show you what all language students have in common, because after all, they're our, our audience. And uh, we should know what kind of learners they are, or what kind of uh, audience we have so that we can adjust things properly to them. Uh, I'm also going to talk very briefly about why online learning, hybrid learning is a legitimate option for teaching languages. Then I'm actually going to get into the components of an online or a hybrid language course. And I'll finish up by uh, talking um, with some talking about some general comments that have to do with a pedagogical framework that um, is very valid for this. Uh, setting as well, and that's learning by doing. Uh, basically, it's a task-based language teaching approach. So let's get started. So what are our students like? Well, we know they're homo sapiens, right? Well, at least we hope so. They are. And uh, we know, therefore, since they are homo sapiens, that they're almost born to speak languages. They are also homo loquens, that is, they are speaking, they are speakers of tongues. Uh, not only a first language, but also a second language or a third language. Although a first language seems to come very naturally and a second language is a little more difficult. We'll be talking about that as we go through the other traits of Homo sapiens. Another trait of Homo sapien is Homo analyticus. We're constantly analyzing things trying to fit the pieces into a larger puzzle that would actually explain the system that we're, we're using or we're looking at or it, in any way you want to put it, to systematically interpret the experience that we're dealing with. And typically there are two channels of homo analyticus. One is implicit and the other is explicit. The implicit channel is constantly using our experience and using tokens and, and events to process and figure out how the system works. Sometimes we refer to this as our intuition uh, because it gives you a strong feeling for how the system is based on experience. The other way uh, of learning uh, with Homo analyticus is explicit learning. Explicit learning is particularly important for second language learning because we don't have all the time to repeat exactly all the circumstances that went into our first language learning. And so we need to kind of really directly address what is it that I don't know about this second language? And that's uh, often uh, most efficient by using an explicit method. 
So we'll have more to say about this with the presentation. And also, we are definitely homo socius. We're a social being, and we use um, constantly dialogues and conversations and interactions to learn things. In fact, uh, the Russian psychologist Vygotsky used to talk about the zone of proximal development. Uh, basically, two heads are better than one. You can do much more when you're working with someone else. And so uh, that is going to become very important when we talk about social call and the construction of a online course. We are also tool users, homo faber, and here a tutorial call will come to bear and also apps and any other computer program or digital uh, device that uh, is helpful for us. And then uh, also we wanna consider the idea that we're, we're homo ludens. Uh, there's great power in play. We love to play at anything play at games, but also play at learning languages. So if we can harness this, we're in, going to create something that's very interesting for the students. Uh, finally, and this is the most important, is we are homo fabulans. We are basically storytellers. We love to tell stories. We do this all the time, whether it's to neighbors or to friends or to colleagues. Everything, we're telling stories all the time. So the, really, the, the end game, the final product of second language learning is to imbue our students with the ability uh, and the intercultural competence as well as the linguistics of ability uh, to tell stories in not only their first language, but also the second or third language. In other words, to develop a multilingual identity. This is the end game, where we're going. Okay, now that we know what our students are like and how we have to to appeal to them. Uh, let's just briefly comment whether online learning, hybrid learning, whether it's a responsible option. Well, hybrid format in particular has been referred to by Alan and Seaman, who've done a large uh, and a very comprehensive study of online learning in the United States in all disciplines. They refer to this as the best of both worlds. You have the classroom world, and all that that affords. And then you also have the digital world and all uh, of the affordances that come from that. So it's the best of both worlds. Um, and so I, I certainly adhere to uh, their estimation of uh, what hy the hybrid format can offer us. Um, in terms of research, there's been quite a bit of research trying to compare the results of online and in-class learning. And the research comes up uh, over and over uh, again, with the results that there's no significant difference between the outcomes of people who've studied a second language in class or studied a second language online or in a hybrid situation. So basically what we're saying, learning takes place in all formats, but just with different emphases. So online learning is also a responsible option in that the less commonly taught languages or the lictals often have very few resources. and so. For instance, right now at UC Davis, we're developing an online Punjabi course because there's very few Punjabi teachers in our system. And so this will be a course that's available online and everyone can, uh, can take. So uh, this is an important consideration. Obviously, flexibility is uh, a very important consideration uh, when talking about online learning. People have very complicated schedules now, families, work, uh, and online education helps quite a bit with this hybrid option being no exception. And then the issue of more giving students more autonomy, more control over the direction of their education. This is where everything is moving in education and language teaching as well. And finally, the consideration of uh, the world at your fingertips with the uh, internet. Uh, we can dial in on cultures from all over the world um, we can get materials written from the point of view of the people who speak these languages uh, as native speakers. And uh, this is all just right at our fingertips with a click of the mouse. So these are some reasons why uh, what we're doing with online learning, hybrid format included, uh, this is a responsible option. Okay, now some of the considerations for developing a hybrid course, for developing an online course. One I've already mentioned, we wanna have a nice balance between tutorial call 
that appeals to homo analyticus, and also social call, right? Uh, social networks, that's appealing to homo socius. So we wanna maximize the affordances of all of these digital tools. We also wanna look for opportunities to harness uh, the playful spirit in, in us all, homo ludens, and finally, to allow people to become homo fabulans in a second language. Uh, along with this, these considerations, let's not forget the importance of vocabulary. Sometimes vocabulary is, is swept aside as uh, not as important as other things in online and hybrid um, courses, but actually it's extremely important. Uh, all the research shows that we have to get to about 3,000 of the most frequent words in order to read and converse without uh, serious intervention from help uh, or dictionaries or something like that, so just to be independently able to read or converse at a professional level. Well, what expectations would we have for the first year? 3,000 is way too much. But maybe for the first year, it's not unreasonable to think that we could learn in a second language a thousand words. In the second year, things have to uh, ramp up pretty quickly, and we have to get to 3,000. Within those most frequent words, we also need to talk about lexical phrases that are frequent and important. Those are known as collocations. That's another important aspect uh, that we have to think of when we're creating a hybrid course. And then finally, when we create materials and as teachers, we actually sit down and write tasks. We wanna be sure to recycle uh, the chapter's vocabulary, the grammar, with every task and activity that the students uh, undertake. Well, this gives me a segue now to talk about task-based language uh, teaching. So let's do that. It's really learning by doing. The primary focus is always on meaning. Uh, many of us like to repeat what Dick Schmidt from the University of Hawaii used to say was to learn what you notice. And it's got to be in the context of me. Uh, a second important point of task-based learning is goal orientation uh, that is as close as possible to real world communication and real world communicative purposes. Uh, once again, learning centered. Well, we've talked about this already. And then a holism through integration of form and function. We're not just practicing forms just to practice forms, conjugations just to practice conjugations. It, it always has to have a form function meaning uh, relationship. And then we'll judge uh, the success of a particular task or activity actually by the outcomes, just exactly how well you perform and undertake that task. And then finally, there's a, uh, a last phase, a, a post-task phase, where you might have a reflection on what you've been doing. It's kind of a higher order uh, thought about uh, what uh, you were doing in those activities. And that's a basic outline for learning by doing uh, that we're gonna try and follow in all the materials that we create. At UC Davis, uh, we offer both online and hybrid courses. The hybrid courses are for our, just our students at UC Davis. But the online courses are offered to all students in the UC system, the 10 uh, universities that make up the UC system. And it includes the first year and the second year. Uh, this is the general portal where someone would come in to register for a course that's completely online where we really don't physically meet with anyone. But the same uh, is true for a hybrid course. We'd have a portal that was similar. and. Um, and then these are the various components that we want to see a, a hybrid or an online course has. Um, probably a master class that we do through a, a video conference. Uh, we're using Zoom. And in this uh, Zoom uh, video conference, we present vocabulary, grammar, logistics. Um, and basically, it's our opportunity to touch base with everyone. Another uh, feature, which the students would start to work on the second day. So these are really days. I'm thinking uh, for a, a module, it'll take about eight days. So the second day, uh, they'll do work on their own using a tutorial call. And in this case, we've uh, developed some Captivate templates for teaching vocabulary. And Captivate is a program which is done by Adobe. And, uh, and we focus in 
on the most frequent words in the first level uh, up to 1,000, and then in the second level up to 3,000. We'll also, in the third day, have a Captivate template that uh, talks about grammar. Now, most of you who are familiar with the idea of the flipped classroom will know, will be familiar with this because uh, you, what you try to do with the flipped classroom is put the grammar explanations online and leave more time in the classroom time for actually doing tasks. Uh, a special feature of the learning management system that we're using, which is Canvas, is the ability to, to do video recordings. It's what I call the best recording because you can do them over and over until you get them just right. It allows students to practice. And later in the presentation, I'll give you uh, the reaction of the students to this <clears throat> video recording task. Also, we have students carry out small group video conferences using Zoom again, groups of three. And here they're responsible for carrying out a task where they have to count on the cooperation of their classmates in their group in order to uh, successfully complete the task. And then we follow this up with something I'm calling perspectives, but it's kind of a grab bag for talking about reading practice, listening practice with videos, and a presentation of culture, both with a capital C and with a lowercase c, popular culture and also high culture. Uh, we use Captivate template for this as well, and we also use the resources offered by YouTube, which are, are many. Uh, we take care of digital compositions using the Canvas software and correct right on the uh, digital screen, and we also do quizzes through Canvas. This uh, gives you an idea of a master class. Uh, this is uh, just a screenshot of a video capture, which we can record all the sessions. The teacher is actually up there at the top. I'll use my pencil here to show you exactly where the teacher is. Okay, so this is the teacher right here. And then the students uh, will be shown here. Some of the students have their video off, but the ones that are actively participating have their video on. And in this particular chapter, you can see we're gonna do the vocabulary here of trips, and we're gonna present the past tense, regular and irregular, uh, as far as the grammar. So that's uh, the lesson for the day. This is the vocabulary template I mentioned uh, that we've uh, programmed in Captivate. And the idea would be to take, um, again, I'll get my pen to show you. We take one of these words, which are actually objects, and we would drag them over uh, to one of the pictures. If we're correct, we'll hear the sound. If we're not, the word will snap back and we'll have to uh, do this until we uh, uh, learn all these words. This is the grammar uh, template. Again, uh, with videos, uh, with yours truly in this case, uh, explaining Spanish grammar. And they do follow up exercises. Uh, this is all tutorial call or the flipped classroom. Uh, whichever name you'd like to use. Now, th this I want to stop for a moment and uh, kind of spend a little time talking about the video recordings that we ask the students to do. Uh, this is a very powerful tool uh, for a hybrid course or an online course. We give them a task, which you see here. It is a, a task in which you have to talk about a trip that you've done, but the trip is in the past. So where did you go? Who did you go with? What did you do? How long did you stay? And here we have the teacher giving a video model. So they can listen to the model. They can look at the instructions. Then they can go to the next slide, which is where uh, the video recording interface is. And when they're ready, they just simply say record. And they record on the fly. This is very powerful and allows them to control what they're doing. What have students said about these video recordings? Well, here's one quote. I was able to rehearse and correct myself beforehand. Another person said, I prepared more for the video recordings than even the oral chats because you have total control over what will be said and you have the ability to think about how to say it and to look everything you may need. So this is a very uh, powerful tool. And I'll 
say more about this in the conclusions. And then here's the small group chat. As you can see, we always are going to give the students a, a task here. It's not just we throw them together in a uh, video conference room, but they have things they have to carry out together and everyone has to pull together in order to make it work correctly. You can't hide in these small group chats. You're gonna be talking for an hour. You can't simply hide as people do hide in the classroom. Uh, you have to participate. This is an example of a video. Uh, this particular lesson deals with someone who's gotten sick and describes their symptoms. It's chapter two about the body and everything that could happen to the body. And so the students will listen to a video, which is about three minutes, and then they'll answer questions, and then they'll do a task related to the uh, listening practice. Uh, this is how we can make corrections for writing, uh, excuse me, uh, directly online using the Canvas in interface. Uh, this is a part and parcel of the Canvas interface. And we can do quizzes as well. So have we changed the paradigm of teaching languages with online and hybrid courses? Well, let's take a look. The instructor's role in the seat time class is kind of the sage on the stage, but in the hybrid and the online classes, we're more of a guide on the side. So there is a difference there. The student role, when many of our students just come to class and sit there like consumers, but in the uh, online hybrid, you have to be much more active much more agency. Hours spent studying the language outside of class. Well, the Carnegie norms say you're supposed to spend three hours uh, outside of class each week, but that doesn't really happen. But with an online class, you better spend a minimum of six hours or you're gonna fall behind quite quickly. And interactions, well, I visited so many online, uh, so many classes, uh, where I see that the students don't even respond once during an hour because they don't get called on or they hide pretty well. Uh, maybe a really good student responds three times in a, an hour class. But when you're working in these chat sessions, these video conferences, you just can't hide, you have to participate. So it's much more intense. So why do students take these uh, hybrid courses, these online courses? Some just enjoy tech. Some need a flexible schedule. And some, unfortunately, I, I hate to say it, but it's true, they don't want to come to class. I understand that though. Some just want more autonomy. Maybe that's a, a positive restate of number three. And some of them just enjoy the fact that they can use the internet and digital means to find out about the world around them. And in, in no time flat, find out who these personages are that are important people in the Hispanic speaking world. Or I could change the examples and make it the French speaking world or the Russian speaking world. So it's all there at the fingertips uh, with the digital world. So our conclusions. Well, we know we're made to speak languages, first and second and third. So what we wanna do in our courses is to have both tutorial call and social call. These are both valuable in the design of hybrid courses. We know also that the asynchronous video, video recordings that uh, I demonstrated um, are a great help to help the students deal with complexity and fluency and accuracy. It's kind of a scaffolding device that exists between what is being on the spot having to answer questions <laughs> in, you know, right away, which is, uh, creates a great deal of anxiety. And writing, which of course you do in isolation. So the video recordings are somewhere in, the, in between. And then finally, we know that more practice with, and language study, whether it's in online, hybrid, or in class, especially if we include, <coughs> excuse me, the most frequent words, will gradually reshape and develop the student's interlanguage and also their ability to deal uh, with uh, intercultural information and to actually become then the homo fabulans that we want them to. And of course, if we can throw in a bit of game playing, all the better. So this is uh, some of the 
references that uh, I've been alluding to as I've been talking, you'll have the presentation and you can uh, look at these uh, later. And I wanna thank you for your patience. And I enjoyed very much presenting some of the work that we've been doing over the years with respect to online learning and hybrid teaching in particular. Thank you very much.